Happy summer, listeners. Here at Camp Alone in the Dark, we like all of our staff to be adequately prepared for an extended stay at our cozy yet fearful facility. I don't want to scare anyone, but I'm going to give it to you straight about summer slashers. If you listen to the old timers in town, they'll tell you these films are fit to feed the pigs senseless slop, trite, tasteful trash. But what they don't know they can truly never know is that these films aren't going to just go away. On the contrary, they gain strength with each passing year. These slashers are beautifully demented creatures. They stood the test of time, survived in the wilderness of this weird world. They're fully grown by now. They've been stalking audiences for several delicious decades, living off wild animals, otherwise known as the us horror fanatics, and generations of kooky completists who bought the VHS, the DVD, and they just can't seem to be able to live without that collector's edition Blu-ray. Many folks claim to have seen these slashers upwards of 40 or 50 times each. Legend has it, one of cinema's most quotable lines, you're going to need a bigger boat, was in fact improvised by Roy Scheider. And considering what scientific research has to say about how sharks don't really eat human beings, the shark certainly seemed to enjoy the taste of Quint, didn't he? Popped him in his jaws like a soft grilled cheese sandwich, only to drag him down to the depths for further enjoyment. He took his revenge, just like Cropsey does. A film that burns with violent overtones. And just when you thought it was safe to take a calm canoe ride on a docile river, all it takes is Tom Savini and some razor-sharp hedge clippers change the tide of that moment to shock and awe and pain. And as digits are removed and blood spraying around in a fine mist, someone else continues to seek their own revenge over at nearby Camp Arawak. And by now, I guess you all know, folks around this sleepaway camp tend to get arrow-whacked in strange ways where you might not want to taste the soup, if you know what I mean. We're going to the bathroom could lead to a stinging sensation, not necessarily found in your nether regions. And while we're on the subject, the only thing scarier than Angela's penis are Paul D'Angelo's short shorts and Mel's predilection for young girls four generations younger than he is. <laughs> now, skip forward about 15 years. Lots of time has passed since Mel's been chasing after Meg and jerking off to his highlights magazines. As Typo Negative's guitar stabs the opening notes to the twisted version of the Seals and Crofts classic Summer Breeze, it's, I know what you did last summer. No, really, I do know. <laughs> you watched The Burning and Prom Night and you photocopied the plot of A Prank Gone Wrong. Oh, you'll get hooked on this tale faster than you could say Billy Blue. And before you can figure out why the good-looking main character looks a lot like the dude from Chico and the Man, hey, isn't that Leonard Hofstetter from The Big Bang Theory? <laughs> Doubt very much he's got experimental physics on his mind, well, with that huge ice pick stuck in his neck and all. Just remember, folks, the summer slasher is out is there. Out is there. Out is there. Out is there. Good evening. This place is cursed. Death has come to your little town, Sheriff. It's Miller time. Why do you want to know my name? I want to know who I'm looking at. Hello, everybody, and happy summer. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Uh, we are super excited. I'm, I'm joined by Matt, of course. Matt, hello. Hey, man, what's going on? <laughs> Dude, I am so pumped for this podcast. We've been talking about this for a long time, hyping it up, and it's finally happening, dude. This is going to yes. be great. Summer's here, and so are we. Yes, man. I got a little, I got a little sunburn, man. <laughs> <laughs> Some summer sunburn. Uh, That's not the only burn. Hot. Not the only burn we're going to be talking about tonight. No, people are going to be getting burning for mm-hmm. sure. But uh, before we get to our our special uh, special edition summer of slashers uh, podcast, uh, what have you been up to? What have you been watching or checking out? Or um, Game of Thrones started. Yeah, you you definitely uh, you're into that show because I I bailed. Oh no, no way I'm bailing. Oh, Abs- absolutely not can't do it man it's too uh it's too much <laughs> thinking for me i think no dude i had i bailed on the walking dead last year yeah i know which is funny because i stuck with that so it's very strange that uh yeah i don't know i just can't get into game of thrones i just feel like there's other things that i want to be watching you know well you know i'm, I'm that's perfectly okay man and listen I, before i forget i want to make sure that we wish a, a very very happy uh, 28th birthday to Jason takes Manhattan today. Yes, dude. Yes, and I forgot you told me to post the picture of the uh, the I, I Heart New York thing poster that I have, and I totally forgot to. So I'll have to uh, do a belated post tomorrow. 
Yeah, sure. And the uh, I just saw a couple of new things here. The uh, the new It trailer dropped, right? Yes, which looks amazing. It looks so. F- I just get more excited about this movie. Well, you know, I didn't watch it, so. Um, oh, you didn't? Okay. No, no. I'm just gonna kind of hold off a little bit. Are I'm you excited? But I'm excited too. But I don't want to see too much, man. Yeah, I really don't. No, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. But I'm I'm kind of invested in. And checking out those trailers, especially, you know what I mean? Which is great. Yeah, well, the, well, the Stranger Things 2 trailer also yes. dropped, right? Yeah, and that looks amazing, too. I get more excited about that show as well. And uh, not really horror-related, but Ready Player One, the trailer came oh, out. Oh, yeah, that's right. Comic-Con Spielberg was there with the cast, right? Yes, and uh, it, it looks great. I'm, you know, I'm not a big... Uh, big cgi fan but that's the kind of movie that you can't really get away with not doing cgi so it's uh i can't imagine yeah right no but i'm excited about that that's gonna be great but yeah how about on the horror front besides like game of thrones you know technically well fits in that i guess I, I, listen we're we're a horror podcast so we'd be remiss if we didn't uh, acknowledge the passing of george romero a yes. monster yeah um you know, rest in peace, man. I mean, Creep Show and Dawn of the Dead alone, absolutely. and Night of, the Living, Night of the Living Dead. I mean, those just absolutely legendary. And it's just, uh, it's you know, it's really sad because he was such a cool guy too. You know, I was watching um, NFL films with because my son is really big into NFL Network, and he did, um, they did a, a documentary. It's called Night of the Living Steelers because he used to do cut documentaries for the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers because you know, being from Pittsburgh, right? And it was cool because they were framing it through the the lens of like his films and stuff in the night of living dead series and they were cutting it to like it was cool they were they were they were juxtaposing football with his movies and stuff it was awesome and he narrated it he was in it, it was that's awesome. so cool i didn't even yeah, know man. he did that that's amazing yeah, look it up man night of the living Steelers. very very cool that's cool yeah definitely check that out that's amazing yeah he was only 77 man it's so sad you know i know yeah 77 years old yeah unbelievable so god bless you pop man yeah Good job. Um, I wanted to talk to you about every time I look on Instagram or anywhere, these pops toys, these little little head toys things. Oh my god, they're everywhere. These figurines. What they're is everywhere? It? Oh, they're oh, called... the pops. Yeah, 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 those like the the character thingies, right? Oh my god, dude. Yeah. So, everything from like McLovin to like Star Wars and it's yeah, like it's like a single... it's like a thing now. You know, like when I go to that that Chiller Fest in Jersey, there's like tons of them. You know what I mean? Like they're, they're there's like anything you can think of. They have a car- they have a pop you know, character thing for it's, it's funny. That's crazy. Oh, you, so you're going Joyzy? You're going to Joyzy, huh? <laughs> yeah, man. But, Representing. Uh, yeah, totally. Um, so literally, what do you think of all the cool, uh, Blu-ray releases that are coming, man? Dude, I'm telling you, that's what I wanted to talk about really quickly is, um, you know, it's more fall related, I feel like, but, um, I got Teen Wolf, dude, the Scream Factory oh. Teen Wolf. And oh. I am, it's so great, man. I haven't really got too deep into the uh, special features, but it's loaded, man. It's a really, really cool. And that's like a movie I love so much. Yes, me too. Agreed. Yeah, it's so good. There's something about that movie, even though it's so goofy. Um, it's just great. It's just, it's just, it is. it's awesome. I love I mean, it. Michael J. Who had a better year than Michael J. Fox in 1985? Back oh my to the future God. Teen Wolf. Oh I my mean, God. Give me a break. Seriously. Seriously. And he's, he's, uh, he's awesome. You know, I know. Jason Bateman, you know, tried with with Teen Wolf too, but uh, it's it, not terrible either. You know, it's, it's not. Right. It's yeah, it's funny. I remember when we talked uh, last week, you were like, "You're gonna get two? and I was like, "I didn't pre-order it, but I probably will." So I think I'm gonna order it. You know, I think you should. Yeah, totally. But what about uh, what about Hell Knight finally coming? Man? Oh, dude, that is the the biggest news for you and me, and I'm sure a oh. ton of ton of fans out there. Hell Knight. Um, I have I have like um like a crappy like it's like a vhs transfer dvd you know what i mean oh god yeah um and i know the dvd's out there somewhere i think it's kind of hard to get but maybe it's not that hard to get but um yeah i can't wait dude hell night well, on I was, blu-ray oh i know so i was holding good. out i mean i was holding out not getting a dvd because i knew that someone had to pick this up right absolutely yeah and it, I, it I was inevitable it's, so it's scream factory right uh yeah yeah they announced that they they acquired it so it's nice. probably gonna be a while. It'll probably be like a year. You know what I mean? But it's worth the wait, man. If we really, because a... I saw, I thought I saw October. In Re- October. I if it comes out that fast, I'd be shocked, dude. They just announced that they acquired it. So how could they? Oh, okay. How could Maybe they do a there. transfer and everything like that that quickly? Unless they've been working on it already. Who knows? Yeah, maybe I, maybe I missed saw. I, I I could just be so excited I'm lying about when it's coming. Out. <laughs> but yeah, that's a huge one. But like, um, dude, April Fool's Day. When are we gonna get that on Blu-ray? I don't it's, know, if... dude. It's coming, man. I it know has it's coming. to, man. Someone's got to grab that because that's such a great one, you know. Yeah, it's coming. You know what else we had, we haven't we haven't seen either that's got to be coming out? What? Um, Silver Bullet. 
Yes. Yeah. That's right? another I mean, one. Someone. I mean, what about that, maximum, so that, o- maximum Overdrive, dude? Come yeah, on. Yeah, that's another one. But I thought Silver Bolt didn't get released with all that slew of uh, of King movies that that came out. That wasn't part of it. No, that that was um, that was Salem's Lot. Yeah. Firestarter. No, well, f- no, well Firestarter came out before, but it was that, oh. that, that, uh, that was later. Okay. But uh, the, with the three that came out at the same time were the It re really they they did yes. uh, Tommy t- you know uh, Tommy Lee Wallace's It. They did Salem's Lot and they did um, Cat's Eye. I believe those. Were oh, the three. okay, gotcha. I th- I don't know why I thought that uh, Silver Bullet was part of those, but yeah. Th- those are like the blockbuster. Yes, yes. cluster that came out. Yeah, the yep. blockbuster cluster. <laughs> but also uh, Misery. Misery's coming out in a collector's edition. Oh yeah, yeah. I saw that. I saw that today. Actually, got to buy that. Man. Yeah, that's that's dude. That that movie's so good, so good. Dude, Silent Night, Deadly Night's coming out. Nice. Um, the Hidden. Did you ever see The Hidden? No. No. Oh man, you'd like it. It's a very good movie. Awesome. Um, so Dead and Buried 4K. Scale. Yes, that's another one that you and I are super psyched about because that's one that you showed me. Remember? Oh, Blue Dan O'Banion, right? You, you Dan were like O'Bannon, Ronald Shusset and uh, Gary. What's his name? Uh, uh, Gar- Gary Sherman, I think. Maybe. Yeah. Direct, the director. Yeah, man, I can't wait. But that was one of those movies that when we were we were having a sleepover, you're like, you got to check this one out, and I was like, what is this movie? And I mean, you, you're just missing out if you don't see that film. It's oh, so good. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. And it so reminds us of, of the town that I live in. Remember we were talking? Oh, God, yeah. It's so like Atlantic Highlands, New Jersey. It's like this cool little, you know, harbor town. And it's, uh, yeah, it's awesome. Very it, inspiring. It, it really is. It's it's like New England-esque, or it's definitely Atlantic Highlands-esque. Yeah, sure. well, yeah, it's just seaside-esque, you know, but definitely more New England probably than, than New Jersey. But anyway. So those are the couple of notes, uh, you know, preliminary things that uh, that I kind of wanted. I have here now. I didn't watch them yet, but I have uh, the Black Coat's Daughter, which I guess originally was called February. Okay. And I have the Eyes of My Mother, which I have not seen either of, but I'm excited to watch both of them. That's cool. Yeah, you have to let let me and let our listeners know what uh, you know, what you think of it. For sure. Yeah. So uh, so you want to get to it, Matt? We got a uh, we got some great films to be talking about. Do you want to? Um, do you want to pick our first one that we're gonna we're gonna get into? Absolutely, man. You okay. do, do the honors here. You do the honors. I'm asking you. You pick. Well, this year, on October 17th, will will uh, mark the 20th anniversary of I Know What You Did Last Summer. Okay, so we're gonna go. We're gonna we're gonna go from from present, not present day. We're gonna go from the from the the closest film, and we're gonna jump back a little bit. So that's cool. Yes. So, um. So this is a film that's near and dear to both our hearts, right? Oh yeah. So let's let, you you tell a little story about you know how, how how we came to to discover. I know what you did last summer because it's really it's important. Well, I know what you did last summer for me. Anyway, I don't exactly know what uh, what you're alluding to, but here's the here's <laughs> what I mean. I just I, mean like where did how did that movie come about? Like it came well, about it, because it, of a it's Kevin yeah. Williamson. Yes, for sure. that's it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, and it's funny it's because you you always have in your memory that you know and you always consider this because it's obviously a summer in the title as well. But you, this is a summer movie for you. It is. And for me, I can so so clearly recall within a week's time in October of '97 going to see Boogie Nights. And then going to see this film like right after, right around the same time. And it's just one, two punch of those two films just like got me so back into, catapulted me back into cinema and just was like, holy shit, like yeah. great filmmaking. And then it's just, then it's, you know, because really think about it, of all the Scream knockoffs that came out in the wake of, of Scream, you know, the humongous wake that was left. Yep. This was really the first substantial release that followed in Scream's wake. And it was about, you know, a little less than 10 months after. Um, so, I mean, listen. Just right from the beginning, man. The Shining esque oh, helicopter shot that's yes. going over the water. I mean, you know, substitute typo negatives. Brilliant, brilliant cover of Summer Breeze oh. for the you know Berlioz's Symphony Fantastique, which is the Shining's eerie music in the beginning. You know, you substitute one for the other. I mean, these shots are breathtaking. You you know what? You had the budget. Might as well take advantage and spend those freaking production dollars. Right? Away. Yeah, Beauti- and that was beautiful. The beautiful shot and uh, that song. I I'll never forget. You know, see, seeing that for the first time and hearing that song, and I'm not—I've never been a typo negative fan by yeah, any I means. Yeah, I dig them. But dig em. but hearing that version of Summer Breeze, I was like, dude, I got to get the soundtrack like now. You know what I mean? Like it was so oh, great. It was so it's great. so tuned. It's so tuned down, man. It's just like oh, boom, oh boom, so boom, good. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, it's so good. It's but right. speaking of the soundtrack, I found a little blast from the past watching the. Uh, I know what you did last summer. A VHS. Let's take a listen to this real quick. 
stop screaming and listen to I Know What You Did Last Summer, the album. Razor sharp hooks from the number one box office smash, including Hush from Coolest Shaker. And Clumsy from Our Lady Peace. 15 very severe cuts. I Know What You Did Last Summer, the album. Out now on Columbia CDs and cassettes. Matt, 15 very severe cuts. Come on. I mean, come on, man. <laughs> but oh, that soundtrack is so good. I remember listening to that soundtrack like just nonstop for probably, you know, a year. You know what I mean? I just uh, had it on like heavy rotation in my Mike car. Filled, filled with razor sharp hooks. How can you not? <laughs> I just, I discovered that today while, while I was prepping for tonight and I had the VHS on and I was like, I have to. We have to include this on the podcast. That's I love beautiful. those commercials. You know what I mean? That, These like silly be- commercials are great. That belongs in like WNUF or something. It like. does. It does totally. It's great. So uh, I mean, I mean, from the opening right to you know the way the shot goes into and around that the the bend there and oh. down to where the kid's sitting and spin like bing, you know, kind of the yes. bookended beginning and ending thing. I mean, it's just it's oh, and then the fireworks go off. It's just beautiful, man. And I love you know knowing the uh, I'm sure most people know this, but they shot um, they shot this movie in two major locations: uh, California and in South Carolina. Cal- South Carolina? Oh, uh, North Carolina. I'm sorry. North, it's, yeah, it's North, Southport. Right. Southport, right. North Carolina. Not far from Dawson's Creek land, right? Yes, which is like more towards Wilmington. Wilmington, right, right yeah. But Southport, actually a friend of ours, um, a friend of ours' mom lives in this town, Southport, and I always ask her about, because she, she's actually here now, and I always ask her, like, what is it like Fourth of July? And she said it's insane. Like, there's people that come from all over the place, and I think that's what Kevin Williamson was basing um, you know, this, the, this sort of the, like this big buildup of this 4th of July celebration, you know, right, the Croker, the Croker festival, the Croker festival. Um, and I even ask her, is there a Miss Croker? <laughs> the the Croker I, queen. Yeah. The and Croker she's queen. like, no, there's no Croker queen, but there's a huge parade and stuff. I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. I mean, listen, uh, let's start with, um, this, I'm mean, already, I want to start with Johnny Galecki's character. I, Max, I, I just love this local boy. <laughs> He's so far out of his friggin' league, and how he's pining for the yes. boobylicious, you know, this boobylicious Julie, played by Jennifer Love Hewitt. Um, I brought you a shooter, Julie. Uh, <laughs> every time he talks, he's like a serial killer. It's he amazing. is, yeah. There's, there's definitely a lot of uh, red herrings, you know, thrown at, and oh, he's and he's surely one. He's sure. one at the very, you know, but he's he's sort of uh, taken out pretty quickly. You know what I mean? Listen, I mean, it's obviously never going to happen between, you know, Max and Julie, but, you know, as, as long as the righteous Adonis pretty boy Ray is around and, you know, yep. he's like, you know, I love the dynamic interplay, you know, the testosterone, the pissing match that the, you know, between these two, um, even when he pulls over um, after they have the accident and Max pulls by or whatever. Yep. You know, Max knows, you know, he's, he knows he's out of his depth clearly too. And, you know, he chooses to just, you know, it, it's just hilarious, dude. And I love like, you know, that whole scene with, with the enormous blocks of ice and stuff and. Um, I think he has that ice so he could soothe his throbbing, raging blue balls that he has because Julie keeps blowing them off. Yeah. But, um, you know, greatest use of the expletive, the way he says, motherfucker. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I, that's just, it's poetry when he says that. Yeah. You know what's cool that I actually um, learned listening to the commentary with the director and I think the editor? Yeah, Jim Jim Gillespie. Yeah. Jim Gillespie. And is, uh, is it Jim or? Oh, yeah, Jim. Um, Jim's, I think he's Australian, right? Yes. But one thing I learned that's really cool, that scene where Max gets it, yes. um, where the killer uh, gets him with the hook, they added that after they did some test screenings. Um, and the reason why they said it was, when they tested it before that, it wasn't like scary it wasn't enough. violent enough. It yeah. wasn't scary enough that the, you weren't scared of the killer, really. There wasn't right. a moment you know, that, that sort of like catapulted this, like, uh, you know, like in scream with like Drew Barrymore, there wasn't that moment. So they, they killed off Max with this violent hook. So you really saw this guy meant business and, you know, you should be scared of him basically. So I thought that was yeah, interesting. I mean, yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I, listen, that's a, that's a common story, right? I mean, by this point, how many addition, you know, fog went through that. I mean, all these movies that we talk about yep. all went through these, these reshoots, but, um, you know, that, that, now that you mentioned that, that the look of the killer, the fisherman, you know, I, I think, has gotten a lot of flack over the years for you know the most non scary. Uh, I think he's you know. great, man. I think it's cool too, man. I, I I dig it a lot. Yeah, I think you know, Urban Legend obviously took a took a little little nod to I know what you did last summer. I feel like because you know with their winner, uh, that that same sort of it's just like a cover up basically. You know what I mean? Yeah, that was that came out shortly after this. That yeah. was the next the next uh, 
yeah, the next so, one in line, you know. But I, I love his his outfit. I've always thought of um, dressing as him for Halloween. I thought that'd be a, like a great costume. You just the black, yeah. you know, rain yeah. slicker with the hook, you know. The slicker, yeah, slicker, man. as Ryan, as Ryan Phillippe says, slicker. Mm-hmm. But uh, I mean, come on, dude. The the setting of this one, man. All the props, the floats, how they're getting them ready for the croaker parade. Oh, it's dude. Gorgeous. Every there's like fish in every scene. Like I, you know, this, oh, it's this, gorgeous. It's great, man. It's nothing drips more summer than. Than uh, than this movie, it's so good, yeah, you know. It's so authentic, and this cast. I mean, Sarah Michelle Gellar oh. has never, rarely been better than, than this movie. And no. she's so fucking, she's so good in this movie. Yes. Jennifer Love Hewitt, Ryan Phillippe, Frederick Pretty Prince, Anne Heche, Bridget Wilson, Johnny Galecki. I mean, yeah, you, you know, for the time, then these are these are really big actors packed into a you know relatively smaller smaller film. Yeah, absolutely. What, what, what was this? 15, 15 to eight, seventeen mil probably was made for uh, somewhere around there. Yeah, probably around there. Maybe twenty the most. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's it. There's it's something that we should also mention is that you know this came from a book too. You know, which is kind of interesting. That I yes, Lois Duncan. Yes. Yeah, and I'm sure people, some people know this, but uh, a lot of people probably don't. You know, this came from like a young adult novel, right? Yeah, from the seventies, I believe. I know what you did, Slimmer. That was her. Like it was like early, early to mid seventies. She released. Yeah, this. yeah, yeah. And this really sad story about her daughter. I think it was like, didn't her daughter actually go missing, and she was found yes. dead in real life or something? I yeah, bu- I bu- it was something, some tragic. Oh, thing it's like awful. That. Yeah, it's really messed up. But um, the one thing I know about the book, I didn't read the book, but my son did, and I, you know, from what he told me, it's really nothing. The the location and all that stuff is completely different in the book. Um, yeah. A lot of it is 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 different. So I think Kevin Williamson took a lot of of, uh, of like creative freedom and sort of making it based on how he grew up and stuff. And I think that's right. what makes the movie so great. Also, you know, I agree. He brought his love of this of that area for whatever reason, whether he grew up there, whether it was a summer place. You know, it, it obviously meant a lot to him. And it came through for sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so I mean, you mentioned Max's death, and that is oh, it's so glorious. Um, and <laughs> my, one of my favorite little, you know, in between scenes is when they're driving to see uh, when Julie and Helen, um, Sarah Michelle, and 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 what do you call it, Jennifer Love are going to see uh, David Egan's family, and yes. Sarah Michelle, Sarah Michelle Geller is, um, is like, so what's exactly the plan? Are we just gonna like go right ring the doorbell and go say, um, yeah, we killed your son, and we we're in the neighborhood, so <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so great. That's just Kevin's that. great dialogue, you know what I mean? And she puts it across, man, so brilliantly, it's yeah, so great, yeah. And how she says it and everything is perfect. Mm-hmm. I think the setup of this film is so great too, you know, like. Um, uh, after they're drinking and they're partying and stuff, and uh, you know they hit the body, um, that setup is 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 really amazing. And let's check this out. I think he's dead. Shit! <laughs> <laughs> I love how he laughs there. But you know that setup is it just really sets up this mystery, right? Because you don't. They, I love that shot. There's the one shot where they show they kind of roll him over. Or if I don't know if he's already rolled over, and they kind of show his face, and his face is so mangled that you can't see who it is. Yes, it's, it's such a great like you know you know me. I love these like mysteries like Scream, and I know what you did last summer. You're constantly trying to figure out who the killer is. Um, but that that that's like kind of catapults this whole story, right? It's just right. like here we go. For like sure. let's yeah, try to figure yeah. out who it is from this moment on. You know. And there's some, I mean, I know uh, Spielberg's very famous for saying about, you know, about Jaws, about how he put the, um, the, the scene with the, where the diver, uh, where, he, where when Dreyfus goes down and the guy floats into the window, or whatever, it's that jump, that jump scare scene. Yes. And he put the extra scene with the, with the shark in there. But he said, like, films should have like one jump scare or, or it was one jump scare too many or something. But this, this film has a couple that really are effective. Yeah, totally. Uh, and I know when, um, just benign ones when Helen goes to answer the phone and she turns around and the black slicker's like right in her face it's oh, like bam yes you know? and then Anne Heche when she comes and knocks on the car window when they get to drive away it's yeah so oh jarring. that's a great one too that's one it's funny you mentioned that that's one in the commentary track uh, on the Blu-ray they say that that one they didn't expect to get a big scare but that's one of the ones that got the biggest scare in a lot of their test screenings which is kind of oh, funny yeah. when Anne Heche just knocks on the window because it's so unexpected, you know? Oh, it's jarring. But I tell you, man, I, I, going back to Sarah Michelle Gellar, she really knocks it out of the park. I mean, I, I, I fell in love with her. This is like she's on the cusp of Buffy and just realizing how great she's going to be for the next, you know, on top or whatever. Absolutely. Was she doing and, Buffy at this point? Well, 97, as I believe, is the first is when the first season of Buffy came out. So, yeah, this is right around the same. I mean, this is literally. So they were like kind of she was doing it at the same time, basically. Yeah. I mean, yeah, she came from from. Uh, 
All My Children, which is a soap opera. And she, you know, when she was younger, and then she kind of grew into wow doing more of this stuff. But um, when th- the smaller moments, man, even I mean, people never talk about this film the way we're dissecting this movie. You know? <laughs> but I mean, just even the stark humanity and, and the, even the the drama that's there when when her and you know after they go away for the year and then they come back and they're kind of like zombie like, you know? Yeah. And when Helen's telling Julie that, you know, that they used to be best friends and they're in the car in that moment, I think when they come back from, from the Billy, you know, visiting David Egan's family, whatever, and how she misses her, you know, and she's telling yes. Julie how much, and she has tears in her eyes. And like, yeah. Man, it's just unbelievable, man. It's, it's like, oh. Yeah, it's very emotional, but that's, you know, that's another reason why, uh, you know, I think Kevin did such a great job with, with, you know, this, this sort of like uh, just writing this story, you know, and keeping these, the, you know, making you sort of relate to these characters, you know, he's so talented with that. And then when she, and then when she goes, like this whole sequence, like, and then she goes in her house and the dad's sitting there watching the baseball well, game. Can we talk about she, the dad? What the, f- what is going on with this dad? Like the dad literally does not move at all. No, he doesn't acknowledge her coming in. He doesn't do, you know. Do you think they were setting up that maybe people were trying to think that he was the killer? I don't know if they're setting that up so much as they were setting up the kind of how alone Helen is at this point. Yeah, you know I, mean? I know that, but it just it watching it, you know, recently preparing for this, it just struck me so odd. I'm like, this dad well, me, is just sitting there. He doesn't even react to her coming in the door. You know? Yeah, I mean, coming from where it what went from whence it came. Like, I mean, from the car with her and how she, that relationship fell apart. And obviously, she has, doesn't have a deep relationship with her with her father. And obviously, yeah. her sister's kind of bitchy. Mm-hmm. So she's they're really like, and then to go from that, and then uh oh, by the way. There's a freaking killer in your house right now as you're going to the fridge to get a drink. Yeah, and that's you a great see, scene. That's oh, God, so good when see. when you, he just slips slips by and you see him in the you hallway mean, and he walks upstairs and goes in a room. You know what I mean? Oh, dude, so this good. this has to have been storyboarded. Like this is perfectly like you yeah. can see these frame for frame. Like you can probably see these things up on a board. Or something oh, like it's so completely. good. So yeah, good. Man. Yeah, Hitchcock was definitely smiling. I think um, <laughs> about this scene for sure. Yeah, definitely, it was really clever. Because listen, because it's perfect suspense, right? The audience knows he's there, but the characters in the film don't. Like it's perfect. Yeah, you know? absolutely. So anyway, um, the, we get to the parade, and it's July Fourth, right? We're talking about North Carolina, correct? Yep. So why is Barry wearing a fucking sweater? Dude? I know. Why? That's, yeah. Well, that's like you know, what movie were we talking about on our last podcast where everyone was in sweaters? <laughs> he's in like, a sweat. Yeah. Dude, you know how hot it is in North Carolina in, in freaking July? I know. Yeah. There's no room for sweaters. Oh man. I don't know, man. Helen, I, I love when she she calls like she's in the back of the uh, the police car and she calls that guy you little shit stick Mayberry <laughs> Mayberry ass. Region. Yes, that's awesome. Oh God, that's a good one. Yeah, that 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 scene's great too. You know, going from that when she's taken from the cop and then she runs to the store and her sister. You know, that that's it's Halloween, dude. Halloween, yeah, right there. It, one it and two. Totally. Yeah, it's so good. It's Jamie Lee running away from Michael Myers. It's yep. totally right. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, one of my favorite scenes uh, is when Barry kind of gets his uh, demise. You know, yes. because it's sort of. Um, to me, I, I wasn't, you know, you're kind of expecting something to happen, but you're not really sure what's going to happen. You're well, in a place Helen, with a lot of people around, right? Right. In the, you know, the Miss, this is like the Miss Croker where she like, has to Helen, turn over. Helen, she, exactly. She has to turn it over, right? Yeah. To the next one. But, um, yeah, it's, 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 it's an uh, amazing scene. It's just, uh, it's, it's just like I said, it's very, with all those people around, you're, you're like, nothing's going to happen. You know, even though, you know, Barry's secluded and all that stuff, you right. sort of, um, you don't feel like anything's going to happen. You feel like maybe it's going to yeah. be a false, false kill or false scare. And then, uh, yeah. And then he gets it. It's pretty, uh, and then he gets it and then, but, but you know, the, it's not gratuitous, but then the camera pans over and there's the blood leaking off the banister there, the balcony. It's so cool, man. The right. Shot that. And then when they go up two seconds later, the blood is gone. <laughs> well, you know what I do the shot, the shot's so beautiful. I don't no, even remember, I know. The, you know, I know it's so good. I, I do. I love this film and it, I still don't, <laughs> I, I find it hard, so hard to believe that this came out in, uh, this came out in October, right? 
October, dude. I, I just, I don't know why. I'm just like in denial. I don't remember. I know I saw it in theaters, so I did see it in October. Maybe it was a really warm October that year, and I just, I just always, I don't know. It's, I guess because it takes place during summer, I just, to me, it's always a summer movie to me. You know what I mean? I'm, dude, in the end, too, when she, I, I, of course it's a summer movie. Yeah, I, mean, I know, and the, I know. The end, when, when she has the towel on at the end, I mean, how exactly, you know, she's yeah. talking to Ray. It so mirrors the Annie scene. She's in a towel. Think yes. about the original Halloween, right? Yes. And and she's saying, "Why don't you just stop telling me about it and come over and start doing it?" Like it, she's, it's like almost the same. Oh my dialogue. god! Yeah, that's Kev. That's Kev playing a little uh, tribute right? there, right? Right? Yeah, I, I mean, never it's... noticed that before. That's a good call, Maddie. Oh, it's 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 so parallel. Oh, it's, like, it's great. It's yeah, great. If you watch it next time, just watch, like put them against each other. It's right. almost ide- identical, and they're both in towels. They yes. both they like you know. It's like it's classic. Yeah, yeah. It's good, and it, it definitely, you know, it, it it leads to, well, the, you know, it leads to the sequel, you know, which I don't know if you want to mention at all, but. I I know I don't know there are people, there are fans out there. Yeah. I am not in the camp. Listen, uh, listen, it, it's hard, it's hard to make movies. We talk about this all the time. We don't bash a lot of films on this. Yes. We, don't, we don't, we don't make our business to bash films. I really didn't enjoy the sequel to this one at all. I didn't either. But you know what's funny? I I got it somewhere. It was really cheap. It was like six bucks or something. It might have been Amazon. Um, and I rewatched it over the winter, and I, I kind of liked it better. See, I, I bet I bet if I watch it now, I would I, like it. You know I what? It. I think is you know since I love the you know the I know what you did last summer film. You know what I mean? That that story. I, I sort of like just fell into it into the sequel, and I kind of forgot what happened too. So. I, you know, I was kind of like, oh, this is cool. It's almost like watching for the first time, and I actually kind of enjoyed it a little bit. Is this the one, is this the one where Jack Black is the star, yes. dude? Yes, yep, totally. That's okay. some, that I can't stand. But if you just get to the, you know, the basics of the story and trying to figure out who the killer is, it's 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 okay. And you there was what? a third one. There was a third one, too, right? I saw the third one. I saw the third one. You did? It's not, you know, it's not good, but it's not terrible either. It's, it's does watchable. It, does it have the vibe of the first one at all, or no? Is you know, it? I, I it, see the, even the second one, which I didn't really like the first, you know, the first couple times. Yeah, I, I it, it still had the vibe of the original yes. one. Yes. The, see, the third one is like so small scale because I think I want to I want to say it was direct to video. It was direct to yeah, and it, it seems kind of low budget, right? It doesn't it, look... certainly, and that's the only reason it doesn't kind of you know vibe with the other ones. But um, but seeing you know, killer the, in the like the black slicker and everything. I, I think that listen, it's been so long since I've seen that. Um, but I, I recall they tried to do a lot of stuff to go back to the original. But like I said, it was really low budget. And it was kind of a different setting and yeah. all that stuff. So that's cool. Um, but you know, worth it. Worth it to check. You know, check it out if you haven't seen it. I guess. What is it like? I always know what you did. I'll, last I'll always, I'll always know what you did last summer. Okay. I want to say I, I don't know. Don't quote me on that. And but. is it? The, it's not the same characters, is it? Like the same? I don't know. No. It's like a new story, basically. Yes. Okay. Gotcha. That's interesting. All right, cool. Well, I, I don't know. Do you want to move on? I feel like we talked about I know pretty. Uh... I know, I know that we're done talking about. I know you did last time. Okay, cool. Well, let's move on. Yeah, let's uh, do it. What uh, what should we talk about next? We talked about I know. We've got. Um... Well, let's not spoil it here. Let's just go up to a place that is very, very close to Canada. Okay. North Tanawanda, New York. Yes. Yes. For. For a visit with our friend Cropsy. Yes, dude. Awesome. So good. I'm gonna I'm gonna put something on in the background while we talk about this, Maddie, just to get us inspired. Um, so we're talking about the burning, and this is a film that you introduced to me like how long ago? Probably about what, 10, 10, 12 years ago, maybe? I think so, yeah. And that's one of those another one that I was like, what is this film? Almost like dead and buried. I'm like I've never, and this is like, you know how much I love slasher movies. So I was so excited to be introduced to this film. You know what I mean? It's oh. yeah. This is this is a great find if you if you haven't. You know, I'm, I'm, most people have seen this, but by now, but you know, it's a cool find. Oh my god, dude! So good, so good. So um, I feel like you know you've seen you saw this when you were a kid. I love hearing these stories. When when was the first time you saw this film? Dude, I must again. I must have seen this when I was like 14. And this was not in theaters, obviously. You saw it like oh, a, no. like a VHS. Dude, was, no, yeah, this is like a rental. Younger. Yeah, this is a rental for sure. VHS, oh. Mikey, Mikey D movie for sure. That's awesome. Um, and I watched it, by the way. I watched the Scream Factory version, not the Arrow release, uh, Blu-ray. Okay. Because they both have a release of this. And the uh, Scream Factory, and looks gorgeous. It looks absolutely gorgeous. Oh, so awesome. 
Yeah, which the, one? I mean, which one do I have? I have the. I don't know. You the have arrow. the. You have the Scream Factory. Yeah, yeah, Scream Factory. Yep, totally. No, you know the Arrow. The Arrow. The Arrow artwork is awesome too. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so you know, just the beginning again. The the prank scene at the beginning at Camp Blackfoot. You know, like the, the Cropsy prank. You know. Yep. It starts off like it again has that prank aspect to it, and so screenplay by Bob Weinstein. What? Yes, I know. Both Weinstein's had a had a part in this. Yeah, I mean, he co-wrote it with this guy, Peter Lawrence. Um, obviously, a Friday the 13th descendant all yes. the way, this film. Oh, um, totally. And who does the score, Mike? Do you know who does the score to this great flick? Uh, Rick Wakeman. Rick Wakeman, Mr. Yes, man. Yes, from Yes, which and, you can and, you can definitely sense, you know? Oh, dude, what, a movie we just talked about recently on one of the recent episodes, uh, Creep Show 2. Yes. Yes. Musical cues in that as well. But a uh, great score. I mean, just a monster, monster musician, Rick yeah. Wakeman. Yeah. Um, so when Cropsy stirs in his sleep and he sits up and he's like still asleep, that's a really freaky moment for me. Like it is. When the kid when the kid's in there and he's like trying to plant, you know, what the whatever and the, yeah. and, and he like kind of sits up and his eyes are still closed. Mike, you won't believe this. What? I have my TV on in the background. I just looked up from my notes and there's a helicopter shot over the ocean and hey, it's fucking I know what you did last summer. I'm not even kidding. It just you. came on? It just came on, dude. What channel? It's on uh, one of the. It's on stars. Oh, dude, that's awesome! Wow, that's cool, man. That's bizarre. Um, anyway, you, but yeah, you talked about the uh, the opening, the prank. You know what the prank really reminded me of, and I wonder if this kind of came into play with the with the story. Um, meatballs. Reminded, well, <laughs> meatballs. No, but the prank reminded me of Terror Train a little bit. The beginning of yes. Terror Train because it has yeah, that call. same kind of thing where there's like somebody was you know wronged and you know he's sort yeah of, definitely he sure. nobody knows what he looks like or where he is or that kind of thing you know yeah that's a good reference yes um, because uh, so I, and I love when they go to the hospital uh, after afterwards yes and uh, they have the, the weird black talking dude, yeah the, the yeah the weird talking the black dude at the trial unit's like a Big Mac overdone. <laughs> Oh, it's so classic, man. Uh, it's so good. But that's, like, not the enjoyable part. I love – once they get to the camp, dude, that's where it really gets good, you know? So, yeah, you know who – so the editor of this film, Mike, is, uh, you know, somebody near and dear to our podcast heart for the reason of it's Jack Shoulder, who I, yes. talked, about earl- who I talked about earlier, had doing the um, – oh, what flick did I talk about? I saw The Hidden. He, yep. um, he's a great director in his own right. He directed Nightmare on Elm Street 2, and he also did – Alone, Alone in the, in the dark. dark. Yeah. yeah. Which is where we got our name stay that's, from, right? That, that's our namesake, yeah. Yeah, for sure. namesake. What did I say? Name stay? What the fuck's wrong with me? I don't know, dude. Same thing, you know. <laughs> um, I love when, <laughs> when they're they're doing the weird talking and they're like Yeah, the, the voiceover, right? They're like the skin grafts didn't take. <laughs> uh, but but the listen <laughs> For this move, for this movie though, it's low budget. They do this little voiceover thing as they do the low angle shot of the nurse with the wheelchair rolling them slowly down the yes. hall, and it kind of fills the backstory uh, in you know the doctors talking to crops. Right, you're, re- yes. you're going to readjust. You're going to be readjusting to your normal life. You know, you know what these kids did. I know you blame them, but it was just an accident. You know? Yeah, no, it definitely it definitely filled that gap a little bit. You know, with the story. And uh, I don't know about you, but I was always disturbed by the hooker scene in the beginning. Yes. Um, and that, you know, that reminded me of basket case a lot, you know, like it had the yes. grittiness that basket case had at the beginning. Yes. Um, yeah. but yeah, that was brutal, man. Like that. Just, rem- yeah. Yeah. To me, it had prowler overtones too. the Tom scene. Another yes. Tom Savini. Yep. Definitely. You know, the violence of that, um, that scene. Totally. And then, you know, she, you know, she goes, you like the low key lighting, huh? Maybe because, <laughs> may, yeah, well, maybe he likes the lighting because you're the ugliest creature of the strip I've ever freaking seen. <laughs> she Seriously. Like, dude, she looks like, like Alice and Janney if she'd been somehow dropped in a blender with Betty Davis. Yeah. It's like, oh my God. Yeah, Jeez, yeah. Leave, leave the lights off indeed. Yes, totally. That, But, but uh, yeah, that scene, that's the feel, I, I love... You know, I love the beginning, and then you know, I wish they would just get right to the camp. But I know they just had to cut see. to the camp. Yeah, yeah, I don't know why they had to kill the. I feel like that that scene really didn't need to be in there for me. I don't know what they were trying to do. They were trying to make uh, Cropsy seem like he was brutal, and you know, kind of yeah. similar to what they were doing with. I know what you did last summer. When they added that scene with uh, what's his name, you know, with the hook. But right. um, I, I don't know. I just I felt like it didn't need that scene. It could have been left out. I guess you know, coming from the the doctors uh, talking to him, readjusting to I guess he's maladjusting. Yes. I guess he, I guess he's not going to follow the doctor, the good doctor's no, advice. No. No. So now on to Camp Stonewater. Um, 
you know, the setup again, complete with slow motion shots of cute girls running bases and boobies bouncing. Yep. And asses wiggling as they wait the next pitch. I mean, there's so many. The masculine view here is just, oh my god, the male gaze is just one thousand percent overload here. Yep. Um. So again, let's, th- let's talk about the people you have. I mean, here, I mean, George Costanza, right? Well, yeah. Let's let's hear it a little bit from him. So doesn't, good. Doesn't he open up the thing later, or like one of the magazines later, and say, like, "God bless your mother and father," or something like that? <laughs> something like that, dude. Oh, it's so great. It's brilliant, dude. Man. This was his first film, correct? I think it was. Man. Yeah, I think he came from like theater or something like that, or I, don't, I can't remember. But it's, dude, it's so bizarre that he's in this movie. You know what I mean? I remember when you told me, you're like, "Yeah, guess who's in the movie?" I'm like, "Who?" Jason Alexander. I'm like, "You got to be kidding me." I know, right? I'm like, I got to see this, you know? But he plays that same kind of goofy character, you know? Yeah, for sure. And, yeah. um, I mean, you won't even recognize Holly Hunter, a really young Holly Hunter. Yeah, I know. Um, Fisher Stevens, who weighs all of about 80 pounds soaking wet. That's skinny, 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 skinny dude. <laughs> uh, Mark Ratner from Fast Times. Yes, dude. By the way, is this ru- is that one dude too rusty from European Vacation? Is it or isn't it? Uh, I, it looks like him, but I don't think it is. Oh, it looks so much like him, dude. It does, but I don't think it is. I don't think it is. But I, I don't know. I could be wrong. But that opening scene, man, all the freaking, all the kids, all the establishment, there's so many kids there. It's like so authentic, you know? Yes. Um, so that just adds to the production value. You know, that one girl goes, the, 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 just go get the softball or whatever. She seems like she walks about a half mile into the woods. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't think the ball went that far, sweetheart. But, yeah. Um, you can go look for it. Um, and then our beautiful, beautiful introduction to Glazer, who is my favorite yes, character in this dude. movie. Yes, dude. Oh my god, dude. He's so when he, horny. <laughs> when he con- when he confronts Alfred, who's the um, who's the Ratner character, Brian yeah. back Brian Backer's character, and he's like, "I'm gonna twist your head off. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you just one time. You stay away from my girl. You understand that? Oh my huh? god, dude. And he goes, "Huh? What are you staring at, you little fucking weirdo?" <laughs> If I even catch you looking at her, I'm going to turn you up. I'm going to tear you up so bad your mother won't recognize you. Oh, my God, dude. He is so persistent, too, with uh, with what's uh, what's his girlfriend's name or the girl he's after. Um, I can't think of her character's name right now. Oh, uh, oh, oh uh, Sal, uh, Sally? Was I that? think it's Sally because he's like, Sally, you want to go to go for a walk? You're going go, to go with me, Sally? Oh, my God, dude. I, it's I'll so be great. real good for you. I'll be real good to you. <laughs> Dude, he's he's a poor man, John. Poor man's John Travolta, man. But I'll tell you, I love this fucking guy. By the way, little did we know that this was this man, this actor was our genre's answer to you know Lawrence Olivier for Christ's sake, because he ended up in two count them two Best Picture Academy Award winning films. Really? Yes, he's in Dances with Wolves. Are you serious? Um, he's Sergeant Bauer, and he's in Unforgiven two years after that, Clint Eastwood's Unforgiven, as a character named Bucky. I swear to God, he's in two Academy Award winning pictures. I'm not even kidding. Wow. So wow. who knew? Yeah. Who knew? Absolutely. You know? Unbelievable. So again, just the eating scenes in the mess hall, man. It just it looks like a real camp. It's loud. It's full of kids. They're they're, they're smart alecky. They're smart asses. They're very it's, cool. You know, yeah, it's, it's so cool, man. It's great. I I honestly feel like uh, um, Wet Hot American Summer took some from this film. You know, as far as just the the vibe and the and, oh yeah, and just the you know the atmosphere and everything. Oh, and so definitely good. the year for sure, right? That's right yeah. around there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely going for that early '80s vibe, you know. So anyway. Um, there's a campfire scene in this movie. Oh my god, it's identical to the Friday the Thirteenth Part Two um, scene. Yes, it is the, the it backstory is, scene. You know, it's it's identical. Yes, yes. And and even the guy comes out and scares him, doesn't he? In a, in a costume. Yep, exactly. It's it's my, pretty much the same scene. <laughs> and, and you want to know something funny about this? Friday the Thirteenth Part Two and The Burning were released within a week of oh one another. Oh my god. So you know they're kind of made simultaneously. Really, if you think about it, they really. Just you know, we're onto this campfire scene. So you and, think it was just like a like a like a just a lucky thing that it just they they wrote the same scene. I mean, listen, they can't, if you came out within a week of each other, I mean, they must have been simultaneous. It's unless like, unless one unless uh, Weinstein like read the the script for two, you know what I mean? 
I wouldn't I wouldn't put it past them, but you know, it's it's almost it's, it is really so identical. Well, how how would Weinstein get a script of two though? Think about it. Dude, Weinstein was load has been was loaded his whole life, I'm no, sure. No, but right? who is connected to the burning that would have maybe gotten a script for Friday too? Oh. Maybe you think Tom Savini. You think, yeah. Well, you know, well, Tom he was given a script. You had because they offered him the film. Tom Savini. So maybe you know, he I, passed it to him. Said, "Here, check this one out." You know what I mean? I think there's some symbolism here because Tom Savini wanted to burn the Friday Two script, and he <laughs> left. He he didn't do Friday Two because he, he was doing the burning. Yep. And he said he said there's no Jason. This is yeah. very well well documented. Right. This should not um, happen. So maybe he just gave maybe just gave it to hey you know what Harvey take this man this is actually a pretty cool scene so maybe we can do something like yeah that. maybe there was something something like that in there yeah good great. point Mike good yeah, point yeah see there you go but uh, let's we can't uh, I, I definitely have a oh, man I definitely have a lot more to talk about here um, <laughs> there's so much to talk about with this film well 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 Glazer <laughs> <laughs> turns out to be what our pal Ted from Friday Part Four would refer to eventually as a dead fuck because um <laughs> when sally finally you know concedes to this whole seduction yes. yeah maybe uh, doesn't she um, he's like can we go can we go make out in the woods <laughs> maybe <laughs> we, maybe you later come, you gonna come with me sally oh my so god they, so they so he scores and it's and it's like you know really like hey hey you cold sally are you <laughs> Oh yeah, and she's like, "Well, you didn't do much to warm me up." <laughs> oh my god! Well, that scene when he oh. he like he prematurely <laughs> ejaculates is the best. He's like, "I'm so sorry, Sally." <laughs> and then and then when she gives another chance, you mean it? <laughs> oh my! He said, "It's like you really mean it, Sally." I'll go get us some wood from the campfire. I'll be right back. <laughs> oh my god! Oh I dude, mean, he's and he's such death, a character. His death scene for me is the Ooh. highlight of the whole yeah, movie. Yeah, it's a good one. I mean, I know we're going to talk about a scene very shortly that is the iconic scene in the well, film. Yeah. But th- his death scene is totally badass. I mean, he gets stabbed, and the camera tracks back with him as he's driven backward toward the tree where he's, like, further gored on the tree. Yes, dude. It's it's pretty I mean, brutal. Oh, it's beautifully directed, too, man. The effects are absolutely No, top-notch. and I think Savini had a part in directing some of the scenes with the kills, I, I, from what I heard. Well, we'll put it this way. I mean, they put him basically on... Um, on, uh, on like basically what's like you know these two things that somebody carried like on their shoulders like a piece of slat of wood or something and they carried him over so really his special effect kind of almost dictated the directing of the movie so that's what you're kind yeah. of alluding to I think yeah yeah no I think that's from from what I heard from some of the special features Savini sort of like uh, storyboarded and directed some of the kill scenes and the strangest strangest thing is when, is when Glazer is killed. They show Ratner, who is who's on his way, you know, just kind of walking through the woods. Yes. And he seems to get off very momentarily with a smile. And it's the oddest goddamn glance you've ever seen. Yeah. When he's watching him. And then and then suddenly he smiles and then he turns terrified and like flees. It's like, wow, it's so, so jarring, that moment. It's weird. I remember the first time when you showed it to me, I remember thinking that he had something to do with – uh, with Cropsey, like he was connected to him somehow. Red like, Herring. Like, red well, herring. Red Herring, but I thought maybe he was like his son or something. You know what I mean? It was like some weird uh, thing that I, I was like, he's connected somehow, you know? And he's, maybe he's taking his, his revenge for crops, like for that, what happened. Yeah, like you said. Right, right. Yeah. So uh, the corpse raft, when it floats in, that's absolutely classic. Oh, um, yeah. It's great. They're just waiting for it. And then, what are they doing? They're so, so lazy. Well, let's talk about that scene, Mike. Yes, let's definitely talk about it. And I got to say, this is, you know, well, let's talk about the scene first, and then I have something to say. So go ahead. So, well, I, I mean, I, 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 mentioned, uh, I mentioned in the intro um, as well, but that canoe scene, I mean, the, the effects, it's just, it's so insane and jarring and abrupt, and it's just, it's, it's so disturbed me when I was 14 years old. I mean, that's the one thing I took away. I was absolutely horrified by the scene. And it's it's funny because it's almost like they're laughing and they're fo- you know like they're just joking around you know yeah, they, right before again. they get there and and uh, yeah and then it, all of a sudden it's just like boom you know yeah and you classic. know it's coming you know it's coming but at the same time you're like yeah but they're sort of like they're just being so friendly with each other like and, and isn't it like that you know, like the banjos in the background it's like that light music yes that's know? what I'm saying it's it's kind of weird you know. It's very strange. Yeah. Misdirection. Misdirection. Yes, yes. Well, let's listen. Listen to this. Oh! 
I think this is really clever. One thing I love about this film is the the look the sound. of well the yeah. sound with well, the sound but the look of the killer and the the tool of of choice the 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 hedge clippers like that's fucking brilliant you know what i mean that's yeah. it's oh. nobody's used anything like that you know what i mean that's that's cool but that that iconic you know shot where he's like he kind of like stands up and really oh. tall and he's got the clippers up like that dude that freaked me out and I've, i yeah. i just saw that 5 years ago for the first time i wasn't a kid that didn't you know what i mean i wasn't affected when i was 15 like you were that really affected me as an adult you know what i mean that's that's really scary you know yeah oh, i was terrifying absolutely terrifying i mean uh, and then the, the damage that he does it's like oh it my stop. god I mean, it just goes on and on, and you're like, oh, my God, when is this going to end? It's like, oh, goodness gracious. Um, so anyway, uh, as we wind down the burning here, I guess to me the burning question here is, <laughs> is evil actually punished in this movie? Um, to me, personally, it's it's about second chances and what you do with them. Like Todd, um, the main uh, counselor who was actually in on the prank in the beginning, I guess you find out later, he certainly gets his. Um, yes. His second chance. He goes from bully to hero, ultimately. Yep. Um and does he earn it? I don't know. You know, that's one of the big things too. Like, you know, he's he kind of did wrong, and then he kind of is becomes the hero. Um, anyway, this Cropsy gets his second chance, and he obviously uses it to go on a seemingly random killing spree, yep. um, exacting his revenge on total innocence. Uh, as the bullies who actually did damn him to his fate, they get to I guess go off and live normal lives and get business job, you know, nine to five jobs or whatever. Right. Except for Todd, who, who has to stay and fight. Um, and I, you know what I hate, dude? The one thing I hate, I hate when people refer to films like this as, you know, oh, it's a guilty pleasure. You know, fuck that, man. Fuck yeah. you if you think that way. I, that pit, screw you, really. So I, I, I love it. This movie, and I've never once had an ounce of guilt about like what I feel about it. No, you know? it's 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 a great slasher film. You know, it's it's yeah. got everything that you'd want from a slasher. You know, alas, uh, Glazer never gets his second chance to be a man for no, Sally. No. Um, but, but you know, I, I guess yeah, that's that's what it is. And yeah. uh, speaking of second chances, uh, I remember seeing this early on as a young kid, and and um, I was very affected by it. But taking away from it, to me, I was bothered by some of the scenes in it. But I was a little bit underwhelmed, like when, when I was thinking about plot and, and stuff. But then the more I watched it, man, I'm just like, you know what? Fuck no, I'm. Uh, this is I've watched this twenty plus times now, and I just I really have a lot of affection. This is just it's a great great little slasher no it's it's like always a part of my summer viewing you know as far as like when i try to link up horror films to a time of year the burning is always in my summer uh you know it's i'm always watching it you know around this time of year which is great and i'm sure a lot of listeners do the same um, oh yeah one question i have for you matt do you feel that this film could have could have been like uh like a franchise film because i feel like uh i feel like cropsy as a killer could have gone on to do more yeah, I mean the ending is a little strange too, isn't it? Yeah, it is. He gets burned, right? Like they they kind of blow him with the torch, but I don't know. Like think of Jason, man. Jason came back, you know, after being you know killed a million times. Why couldn't right. Cropsy come back? You know what I mean? Like I I honestly think they could have done like almost like Friday the Thirteenth, just like another another camp, you know, comes into play. New campers next year, and Cropsy's back. You know what I mean? I don't know. Well, what are, what are the numbers on this? I mean, I don't know how much it made exactly. Um, yeah, that's probably has something to do with it, but I just mean story wise. I feel like it definitely has potential to be, you know, to be. Hey, maybe maybe our uh, our influential buddy Bob um, and Harvey Weinstein said they they paid money to to bury it and make sure they they didn't make another one because they didn't want their their name on it that, associated that might, with. That might have been it. Also, who knows? You know, I would love to see an interview with Bob and Harvey Weinstein where they actually acknowledge this movie. I mean, they really should. They should, yeah, because I think they sort of, like you said, swept it under the rug, you know? Yes. Yeah, but it's a great movie, and I thank you for introducing you, introducing Dude, it to me. You're very welcome, man. Uh, uh, I, I love it, man. It's a great one. It's good. Cool. All right, so we've we've cut through. We've burned through two yes. films. Two, um, two more. We have yeah, two more. I think I know where we're going. We're going we're gonna to stay on the camp theme now for, for number three? It is summer after all. Yes. <laughs> so uh, why don't we get a little arrow wacky? Yes, and we're going to play a little. Yeah. Let's there it is. In the background. I love how this starts. Such a good uh, soundtrack. But then when the singing starts, you're like, okay, I've had enough. No, dude, I don't have enough. I just, I'll take it all in. Yeah. I'll take every, I'll yes. take every bit of it. Now, this is, uh, this is another one I think. I think I saw the original back in the day, renting it, but 
I can't remember for sure. You know, I, I'm pretty I sure. Saw this, yeah, I saw this before the burning for sure. Yeah, and so this was just like a rental for you too, just like watching late at night kind of kind of deal. Definitely. Oh, uh, me that's and, awesome. We. I was young. I was 12 maybe when I saw this. 12. Oh my god. Oh, dude, the innocence shattered left and right when I was young. Oh um, man. But I mean, this this movie, Mike. I uh, watching it again. I, I'm so taken with how amazing it holds. Amazingly, it holds up. It is I feel the same way. Oh my god, it gets better every time I watch it. It's like, great. It's, it's great. You know, like just oh, it, there's so many moments where you laugh. There's so many mo- moments when you know. Absolutely. You, it's it's yeah. It's it's so good. You know, and this movie is so. Oh my God, it could never be made today, and for a million no, different, for no. a million reasons. You know, it just could not be made today. I mean, um, and but I love what I love about it um, is it makes no bones about what it is. You know, and you have this, <laughs> you have this huge dramatic stabbing musical cues. You know, in the beginning, they're showing these beautiful lush. By the way, autumn, autumn like. Yes, you know, it establishing is establishing shots yep. at, at Camp Arawak in New York there, um, and and. And the music over it does not match whatsoever. No, because it's like, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, it's like wait, it's so what? dramatic, and it's like, yeah, it's like very picturesque, <laughs> you know. And you're like, oh, this is so pretty. <laughs> uh, but I love that. I love the juxtaposition of, of music and image. Like I just think, it, and it, it's, that's what this movie is. Like it knows it's very comfortable in its own skin, and it knows like no, this is what it is. It's not, yep. you know. Um. And the Scream Factory, again, the Scream Factory Blu-ray is absolutely gorgeous. It's awesome, um, yeah. It's cool. It's really good. You know, I, I was very, very turned off, especially as a 12-year-old. When when Aunt Mar- when Dr. Martha <laughs> Thomas comes on, um, and you know, I was I just couldn't even, oh, when she comes down, like, oh, Rick, are you ready to? I'm just, I was like, oh, my God, I can't. Who is this woman? Like, I was just so turned off by the, the campiness of, of yes. Ricky's mom. You know, yes. Ricky's mom. Um, and now I I love it now. I just it so perfectly fits the tone of this film. It's know? great. I don't know if you remember. I went and saw this with uh, our good friend Kevin Malahi in uh, New York City when um, he hated her, right? He, no, he was just. I was. What I was going to say was, it was fun to see it with a with an audience in a theater because um, a lot oh, of scenes. Al- you saw this in Alamo. The draft no, was- it wasn't Alamo. It was in the city. I forget where it was, but uh, what's his name from Fangoria was there hosting it. Um, wow. Oh, what's the guy's name from Fangoria? The, oh, the, 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 the Tony Timpone? Yes, the Tony Timpone was there. And uh, and uh, and uh, Felissa Rose was there. And, oh, and what's his name with the short shorts? Um, he was there. Paul, Paul D'Angelo. Yes. Um, but it was just cool to see with an audience because, you you know, people were just laughing. You know what I mean? It was just like people weren't afraid to just laugh and just let it go because it was – that's really what it is. There's a lot of scenes, especially, you know – uh, with the ant, you know, it's just goofy, you know, it's just like kind of over the top and goofy. I mean, when she, every time she threw her hand against her cheek and she looked at the ceiling and she oh said, my that God. simply will not do. Yes. No. I'm like, oh my God, it killed me. Yes. Now I absolutely, like I said, now I, I love it. I, I, I just, it's no, part of I the know. fabric of the film. To me and, now, you, know? you know, just jumping back that scene where, um, you know, where the, 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 the uncle and one of the, the siblings gets killed. Um, that one girl yes. that's riding the boat or no, is she the one riding the boat? No, she's the one that's driving the guy. The kid makes her drive. Right? No, no, it's but I'm not, the, not the one that's driving the girl that's in the water. Oh, okay. And she's like scream <laughs> the way she screams. And she's like, no, why did he like, it's so ridiculous. And so over the top, you know what I mean? Yes. Oh, the one that's water skiing. Then it's that one. Yes. It's her. Yep. Um, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. That, that, that opening is a little goofy. You know what I mean? But well, but, but Mike, let's let's talk for a minute about um, about our friend Artie, the the, uh, the cook. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is a character that you have not seen very often, and you will not see. Yeah, uh, no. The the, the the lingering close up shots of him um, as he puts that long coffee stirrer toothpick, whatever it is, in his mouth. Oh my god! And he uh, he ogles the young baldies as oh he calls them. Oh my god! It's so disturbing. It and then, is. And then the 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 vaudevillian, you know black dude that's next to him that's completely like yes yep man like it's so like i like, know it's like slave time yes almost. it's like it's yeah inappropriate it like, really oh is God. yeah it really is it's bad and he's giggling and he's laughing and then and then paul d'angelo is there with his red shorts and it saves the day you know? oh my like, god uh, he's great dude so great 
I mean, the biggest goddamn pot of boiling water I have ever fucking oh, seen I in know. my entire life. They, they um, must have had to get that pot shipped in from somewhere. But but these special effects in this movie, man, no budget, but goddamn, they are amazing. No, they did a good job, you know? Like, they, they did good. Like, um, I was going to mention, you know, we're kind of jumping ahead, but my favorite scene is the scene with uh, the kid who's taking a shit and, uh, the, and yes. the bees, you know what I mean? Which is, uh, which is really traumatic. Yes. Oh, that's beautiful. Who is that? No, we're playing games. Is that you, Benji? Jesus Christ, I can't even take a shit in peace around here. <laughs> what the hell are you doing? Hey, get that thing out of here. Come on, get it out. But that that's that scene when they show his face after he falls down, that's pretty impressive. You know what I mean? No, it's terif- it's terrifying. Yeah, too, like, th- that's very realistic. I mean, think about it. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. Um, not I mean, not having you know nine billion bees on you, but the, the whole concept of how that works. Yeah. I, mean, I was you know you would you'd be terrified of be you know right. I, everybody, I think everybody kind of is you know. Yeah. I think comedically, one of my favorite scenes is the baseball game. Oh, dude, eat shit and live, Bill. Oh, eat my God. And, eat shit and live, Bill. <laughs> take, then he goes, he goes, take the bat off your shoulder. Fuck you. <laughs> the, the guy with the headband. Hey, Bob and Rebob. Like, oh, my dude, God. Dude, kid. Jonathan Tearson, man. I, that Ricky, dude. He is, he's amazing in this. He's he is absolutely amazing. So good. This. So good. And people are listening. Jump back because we had Jonathan Tearson, who was Ricky. Episode four. Episode, episode four. four of our podcast. He actually did a whole top five of this, which is great. So go back and listen to that one because he was re- yeah. a real trooper. He was. He awesome. was so game, man. He was great. Yeah, it was good. But um, yeah, he's all his lines, man. When those kids are on the roof and they're like throwing the uh, water balloons or whatever, he's like, "Fuck you!" Yeah. <laughs> he's oh, just, God. dude. He's amazing, man. He's so good, so over yeah, the top. Made- I love it. He's just another piece, a perfect piece of this movie. Um, and Kenny is another one. Um, yep. When they're in the canteen or that place, you know, he's like, hey, Bobby Reba. That He's got the Blue Oyster Cult t-shirt yes, on. Yes, dude. Hey, hey, Angela, how come you're so fucked up? <laughs> That's great, dude. There's so many classic lines, dude. So I tell awesome. you, I love that, that Hiltzik, uh, the director, I love how he constantly did those reaction shots um, of Angela and how priceless they are when she's just looking at them and not talking. Yes. Oh, my and God. And by the way, by the way, shout out right now to Felissa Rose, who absolutely – kills it in this movie she is yeah. so good in this movie wasn't she like 14 when she filmed I mean, it or something like 13 or 13 yeah. or 14 and so I young tell you, man, man but she was so good in this movie man yeah I, and watching was. it now I, I so much appreciated you know how naive she must have been and felt and you know as, as a young girl you know coming into her own you know as a woman and stuff but just my god she was so pro in this movie and 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 everything that the director asked her to i'm, I'm sure she did in spade i mean she just sells everything in this yeah movie. absolutely uh, you know, Judy, she's a real carpenter's dream, flat as a board and needs a screw. Oh, my God. So great. She's funny, too. Oh, the, and the word, how many, I mean, the word pricks. And it's like, it's like we talked about before, like when <laughs> Jonathan Tearson, the way he says pricks is the same way that the Max in, and I know he did this time, he goes, Mother, yeah. motherfucker. It's yeah. like one of those beautiful, like the yeah. way, it's music, it's music to me. Pricks. Y'all pricks. Fucks. Pricks. Oh, it's so good. So, so when good. he re- when he rescues Angela from the water, this is the, maybe the best one. After um, Meg throws her in, yes, uh, the little kids are hurling sand at them. Little fuckers! <laughs> oh, God. I think you pointed that out to me. Um, I that think might be the best. Scene. It's it's great, dude. It, anybody go back and watch that. Watch the kids hurl the sand at him as he's pulling her out of the water. It's brilliant, dude. It's so good. I mean, every character. I mean, you have Paul D'Angelo, and then you have Mel. I mean, yes. how can you not talk about Mel? When you know when he discovers Meg, and, oh my God, Meg, not, not you, Meg. <laughs> I had him, I had him, I let him go. Yeah, I love how I love how he starts making this impassioned speech. He's like, "I'll stop him, and he'll never get away again." Oh my God, it's like, and he leaves, and there's this huge musical crescendo, and then oddly, he stops, and he looks, his head swivels back toward Meg's body. Yeah, as as if his rampant pedophilia 
won't deny him just one more longing glance at oh a corpse, my a naked corpse. Like, are you, are you this guy? That he was that sick. You yeah, know, he really was. <laughs> um, and it's it's it, it's so obvious too in Blu-ray uh, specifically that uh, in Judy's part there that Ricky is standing in the doorway, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. You could totally see. Yeah, the shape. You know what I mean? VHS, it's so like, oh, who the hell is that? It's just a, right. it's kind of like you know, but Blu-ray, it's like, holy shit! It's, yeah, it's, it's super it's clear. Jonathan Tiersten standing there. Yeah. By the way, his his hands are the ones that do all the killing, I think, or a lot of them. Yeah, he told. I think he told us that on our podcast. He did. Yes, he did. Yeah, yeah. which is funny. Yeah. Again, another shadow death, Judy. Another great yes, way to film. Yeah, that's it, a know, good one. Yeah. Tasteful, you know. Yeah, um, absolutely. This, I mean, this movie so holds up. Um, like I said before. Uh, one side note, it's always thrown me for a loop. Um, you know, all the deaths are justified, right? Like yeah. somewhere or another, right? But why, why the little campers on the nightly camp out there hacked up to bits whoa, as I know. they sleep? Like, I know <laughs> that what? doesn't make, that didn't make sense. I feel like that was just for, for a shock value kind of thing. You know what I mean? Oh, it shocked me. I'm like, oh my God, they're all hacked up. These, yeah. They're just sleeping. They're just sleeping on the camp out. <laughs> they didn't do anything. Well, unless you, they were the kids throwing the sand. Oh my God. Yeah. So. And the thing, the other thing that cracks me up every time, and, and, and I bet you it wasn't made for humor at all, but when the cop, uh, the young cop goes in, I guess it's to see, I guess it's Meg again, um, and he and they have the close up as he comes oh, out the, the screen, the he, fake his, mustache, yeah, with that face, like oh, like he's never seen anything like, yes, it, it's it's the greatest face. I, it's it's so, it's so weird, like not that he's a good actor in the beginning, but like he's so different in the beginning, and then all of a sudden. They must have, you know, filmed scenes like months later or something. He's like a totally different person. It's so weird, you know? Yeah, it's bizarre. But look for that fake mustache because that's great. That's another (laughs) another scene when we saw it in New York City that people were like on the floor, like dying laughing. They had to have been. But they weren't on the floor at that ending, Mike. That ending is... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That ending... Speaking of... Let's go swimming. Now? What about our clothes? Take them off. I love how, how psyched he is. He's like, okay, you know. Oh, can't, I, I wasn't so bad, was I, Angela? Yeah, yeah. Like he's yeah, he's kind of like you know he's too cl- cloying and annoying. Right. But I like him. I, I like him too, though. I no, do. I do. Yeah, but that but again, ending, again, man. Oh, Phyllis, Phyllis's face when she says that line right there that you just played. Oh, god, yeah. it's perfect. It is perfect. Yes, it definitely. And and that goes into that flashback reveal, man. How great when she's whisp- when she's whistling and, and combing yes. his hair and. You know, kind of brushing his hair back, and it goes into that. That flashback is horrifying. Oh like, my it's like, god! Holy shit! Man. Yeah, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. It's yeah, it's really well done. But that's. I feel like this is one of those, you know, one of those movies. I think that episode four we called it like the the top five holy shit endings. You know what I mean? Like yes. it's yes. it's definitely it's up there. It could be my number one. You know what I mean? It's I think it was your number one. I think it was. Yeah, unbelievable, man. Crazy, crazy stuff. You know? Yeah, so good, man. Sleepaway Camp. I mean, listen, if you haven't watched it in a while, please go back and watch it again. Oh, it's such a... You have to watch it every summer. You have to, you know? And watch the special features, man. I'll tell you. Did you watch the special features? I haven't watched them all yet, but I'm I'm getting there. Oh, man. It's so beautiful at the end because it's mostly, you know, it's mostly Felissa being interviewed, too, like back and forth. And she she spills her soul about... And at the end, she's kind of wiping her tears, like thinking back. She's like, what this movie has done for me. Like, it's so genuine and heartwarming. It's Yeah, like well, think of her. That's really, you know... That's all she's really – she's done a lot of small films, you know what I mean? But this is definitely what people know her for, you know what I mean? Oh, man, I, w- I will treasure her to the end of my days just, just for this. And she just seems like such a cool person. Yeah. No, she'd be, uh, she'd be great to get Phyllis, on the podcast. If you're, Phyllis, if you're listening, please. Yeah. Uh, we'd, we'd love to have you <laughs> anytime. I heard um, she's pretty approachable too, so I'm sure we could get her on here. That'd be fun. Yeah, maybe Jonathan could put the good word in for us. Yeah, that'd be nice. But uh, yeah, this is definitely a go-to summer movie for me, without a doubt. You know, it's no awesome. doubt. Every year, every year, it's great, and it's. I love how you know, if you haven't seen it, it's it's a fun ride for sure. <laughs> All right, God bless, man. Yes. So we're leave, now we leave Camp Arawak. It's in the it's in the rearview mirror. Yeah. We're driving towards a little place. It's a destination. A little place called Amity. Yes, which is funny. Amity because- Island. I think, you know, we kind of discuss this. We're like, you know, Jaws, slasher film? I, I think so, you know. you Do you think so, Maddie? Obviously. Uh, I am a believer. Yeah, dude. It's, this is, uh, this is one of those films that, 
you know, some people wouldn't consider a slasher, but I definitely do. It's got, it's got killing. It's got, doesn't, doesn't have the mystery, but it's, it's got one of the greatest stories of all time. I feel like, you know, this, this, I, I think this is the greatest film of all time. Yeah. This is definitely one of my top, it's in my top five. You know what I mean? Is 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 my all time favorites, you know, unbelievable. I mean, I don't know if we're going to find the answer to the, if you can answer that or you can, I, I don't even like saying that, but I really, I don't feel bad about saying it about this movie because it's, no. it's so, it's so perfect. Um, you know, the, how, how is this for, for, you know, poetic it's, you know, this movie birthed the summer blockbuster and I, I despise typically summer blockbusters. Like I can't stand them. And, this movie set like the tone for and 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 this very the very gold standard of what a summer blockbuster was, and you know the first one was the best one as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, I I, I enjoy them all except for four, but I do enjoy you know. Uh, do do me a favor, watch the Revenge again. You might not love it, but it's definitely again, it's a watchable movie. Well, it's, the it, beginning of four is great. You know, oh, the beginning is fantastic. Yeah, the beginning of four is awesome. You know, it's like Christmas time, right? It's it's great. yes. Um, but yeah, no, they're, they're all great. We, you know, I, my family, we have a tradition since those Blu-rays came out, you know, Jaws 3 and 3D on our third floor, we have a 3D TV and we watch it every summer in 3D, Jaws 3. And it's, I have to, I have to make the trek up to you and watch that. Oh, cause... dude, it's fun, man. It's fun watching in 3D, you know, it's cool. It's like the new, new 3D and not the, uh, not the old school, the way they showed it in theaters, you know, but it's still fun, you know? Sure. Um, it's great. Yeah, listen. So. This film showed, I think, very uniquely that style and substance can coexist. Like when you're in the hands of a master like Steven Spielberg, who at this time, if you think about it, was really a burgeoning filmmaker. He wasn't yeah. the he wasn't the speed Steven Spielberg. What do you do? That was so, Duel and uh, Sugarland Duel, Express. Duel, Duel and Sugarland. Dude, that's yep. all he had he did he had done up to this point as far as directing jobs. And um, you know, a hero, a mentor, like you know. I am putty in your hands, Mr. Spielberg. That's that's what you do to me in this movie. Um, he's a professor. He's of skill. Uh, he, it's incredible. He pulled off what he did. Think about it. How how far behind this movie fell um, fell. And considering he was like you said, only two feature films in. I mean, did anyone see this coming? Seriously, like this seems like his, this was his last gasp. Like either you know, do you do this or you <laughs> go go find a carpenter yeah. job or go you know go find, go film commercials or something? I think. You know, really. I, I think Sugarland was the only feature. It wasn't Duel like a TV movie Duel or something? Duel was a TV movie. Yes, yeah. Duel was a TV movie. Yeah. Exactly. But um, yeah, he's it, amazing. He just fell into the right place at the right time, and he's super talented. You know what I mean? So he, he got the, the best picture he could have had to sort of catapult his career, you know? But I mean, think about the challenges that he must have faced on a daily basis. Well, there's um, yeah, that's those stories are out there. You know what I mean? Of just how what a nightmare the shoot was and with the shark and... Um, yeah. And yet, and yet, dude, all of those things, right? And it's still, it's the perfect synergy of every film department, the direction, the acting, the cinematography, the art, the sound, the score, everything, every part of it comes together and, yep. and just make, and, and makes this perfect, yeah. perfect film. It really is. It, the characters, the dialogue, you know? So it's almost oh. like it willed itself into existence. Like it didn't matter that all this strife was going on. It had to be done. Yes. It needed, it was destined to be, to it's be what it was. Definitely one of those films for sure. Yeah. So um, for me, uh, and I know you want to talk about this a lot, um, but I just want to share a little memory I have with the special about this movie. Um, my grandfather, God rest his soul, um, a long time now, used to watch this movie constantly. So this movie came on TV. Um, either you sat and you watched it with him right. or you got the hell out of the living room like immediately because it was staying on and you weren't going to talk over it. Right. He wouldn't allow it. It was that sacred to him. No, and it didn't matter what time of the day it was, what time of the night it was, it, this movie was staying on. Um, and the recliner that he sat in, man, it was his orca, you know? Yeah. The, remote was, the remote was his compass, his engine. The shark, to him, was any of his grandkids who dared to tell him, hey, Pop, you're going to watch this movie again? He'd, he'd surely harpoon your ass for that. Oh, my God. Um, but his destination was always, always the waiting comfort of every frame of this film. So oh. I miss you, Pop. Miss you, Pop. Yeah, no, it's that's that's a great memory to have, you know. And I feel like that's that's how I feel about the movie. You know what I mean? Anytime we watch it in my family, you know, everybody knows how much I love Jaws and it's comfort food, right? Yeah, it's it's like a respectful thing. And we were lucky to see it in theaters. Uh, was it the twenty fifth anniversary or thirtieth? I think the thirtieth uh, just happened, right? Was that two years ago? 
three years ago? I forget. But, yes. Um, yeah. So well, we, no, no, seventy five. No, that would be in the fortieth. Forty. Oh, maybe it was. But we saw it in theaters, which was great, and it was cool for me to be there with my kids and be like, "Wow, you guys get to see it on the big screen." I never saw it on the big screen back in the day, so it was just cool for them to see it. You know. Would you see it? Uh, would you see it on a floating raft the way they do? And I totally would. I think that'd be amazing. <laughs> oh God, I don't know, man. <laughs> It's so funny. I people know that I love the Jaws, right? So on Facebook, I've had at least twenty people send me that picture and be like, "Hey, have you seen this?" You know what I mean? Um, and I'm just like, "Yeah, that's great," you know. But it's just funny how people just <laughs> just like keep sending it to me. You know what I mean? Like, you should do this, and I'm like, I'd love to. You know, it'd be that, awesome. That's on yeah, that's on your bucket list for sure. No, oh, sure. that would be great. But what a, I don't know. Do you do you think it could be made today? This movie. Um, like, like the way they made it, like the no, way they made it. No, 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 it'd be CGI. It'd be all bullshit. You know what I mean? And I, th- there's always rumors that, that they're going to remake Jaws, which I yeah. pray that they don't. You know? But don't you think it's too slow, too long, too much dialogue? Well, yes. That the yeah, that's the other thing. It's not enough uh, action. You know, not enough uh, get to the you know get to the point kind of a, a film. You know what I mean? It's definitely again, Mike. Again, sorry, but this every line in this movie is perfect every shot every everything yeah no it all comes together it, it and if you take one bit out you know what i mean it, it's almost could fall apart you know what i mean it's it's that good of a film it's like you said it's like the perfect you know puzzle piece you know puzzle and, puzzle put together you know and yeah and to me those those quiet moments those small moments they're the to me that's what bolsters and heightens the drama and allows for the suspense when you have these three-dimensional characters and you're putting them in in peril and and, and and moving them like chess pieces the way this movie does, you really care about what's happening. And, you know, collectively, all this, this only helps to, to, to me to shore up the narrative. Absolutely. You know, yeah. As far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Well, let's let's you know, since we're talking about summer slashers, let's talk about the kills in this film, because there's uh, there's, you know, one that's, you know, arguably some people have a hard time with it is, you know, the uh, Alex Kittner, you know, at the. Oh, the the Alex Kittner one's rough, you know the yes. the brilliant one is um is Chrissy, you know what I mean, getting killed yes. at the beginning because it's sort of uh it's done really cleverly and you know cool special effects with her being pulled towards the 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 bell buoy and stuff like that and then her yes. just disappearing, but uh, the Alex Kittner one is is one that some people still have a tough time with, you know what I mean, because it's it's pretty rough, you know. Well, and and it's, if you think about it though, I mean. They, they really like there's kids playing in the foreground and you see him floating in the background on his raft and then you just kind of see the fin turn over and then you know the blood's obviously starts spraying up and yes a, you know. that's yeah but it, but it's not like you're not right there like at least it's kind of like all right so it's kind of like brody's i guess it's kind of like brody's pov at that point really right but did you see not too long ago they posted pictures online of how that how the scene was supposed to look they actually no, they had no. shots they had closer shots of him getting killed and I don't know who made the call, if it was Steven or if it was... Um, Zanuck, Zanuck and Brown, maybe. Maybe, but they, they cut to that, like you said, like the wider shot from the beach almost. You know what I mean? Uh, Thank which, goodness. Which, Thank yeah, God. I feel like is more... It's like a almost like a POV shot. You're kind of seeing it from where the audience would... You know, where the, the characters would see it from the beach, you know? Right. But um, I couldn't imagine that scene closer up. You know what I mean? Cut to a closer shot. You know, that would just be... Make it even more kind of just brutal for not not the right reasons. Absolutely agreed. It would be yeah. gratuitous, definitely gratuitous for sure. Yep. Um, so, I mean, that seems gross. I mean, there's the the off ki- the off uh, camera kill um, with the uh, what's his name, Ben Gardner, I guess. What's yep. his name? I think it's uh, yeah, that's Ben Gardner's boat. Yep, Ben Gardner. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's I mean, you see him obviously float up, but um, you don't actually see him get killed. No, but that's a great scare. You know what I mean? That, oh. When that head pops out, you know, it's it's awesome. So yes, good. it's it is great, um, and Bro and Brody's uh, son's near near death. Well, yes, the the other guy, right? The other guy. Gets yeah, it. yeah. How you doing there, boys? <laughs> well, I forget what he says. Something about uh, <laughs> you, you need some help, help over there. <laughs> yeah, you need some help over there. Everybody doing all right? Oh, uh, it's great. You gotta pull the sheet in, or something like that. I forget some sailing terms or something. Yeah, that's that was pretty pretty disturbing. Yeah, that too. was a that was a brutal brutal death. You know, that's pretty bad. And I think that's the one they kind of recreated. Uh, Universal uh, Hollywood. They have the guy like in the uh, in the in the little boat there, and he gets gets taken, which is fun. That's yeah. right. That's right. And then and then Quint. Oh. Yes, Quint is uh, is bad. Let's get to that. <laughs> Yeah. 
that's you know that scene it, it's so brutal you know what i mean it's like at that point it's oh. it's you have to you have I, that's the the brilliance of it is that you have to get that brutal to sort of uh oh. build up this ending you know now where where brody has to sort of fight the shark on his own you know what i mean yeah because uh, hooper's down below you don't know if he's alive or dead yet you know exactly what I mean? um yeah. but yeah it just builds this this tension where you, you you know the audience is so like fighting with Brody to try to you know we have to get rid of the shark you know what I mean? Yeah, that was, I mean P, I still can't believe PG just that scene alone. I but that <laughs> scene alone. I know. How, I know. How how how, how is that, that possible? Well, there wasn't PG thirteen at the time, right? So no, but absolutely not. How did that not get an R rating? You know what I mean? I, I don't understand how that that was possible. Like you the said, MP, the MPAA was generous. I, I guess know. so. Somebody paid somebody off or something you know unbelievable yeah i mean just oh god and just the way he slides down and tries to grab brody's hand and fall oh my god you're like oh, he's going he's, he's yeah. sliding down oh, it's crazy Christ. the um the relationships uh, you know that's one of the other reasons why i love this film is the relationships between uh multiple people but you know like brody and his wife um but the three you know uh hooper brody and quint you know, once they get on that boat, I feel like it's almost like a different movie. Do you ever feel that way? It's like, um, yes. it's almost like Stripes when you watch Stripes. It's like they're they're in, you know, they're in uh, they're training, and then they go on their they go on the mission to Germany or wherever they are. It's like right. a different movie almost, right? Doesn't it feel that way to you? Like, um, like the Stanley Kubrick uh, film as well. Yeah, yeah. It's this a part part war movie part uh, training camp and it's like two different movies completely. Right. Yeah. That's how I feel with Jaws. You know what I mean? Not that that's a bad thing for Jaws. Like Stripes, I feel like it, it could be a bad thing, but for uh, for Jaws, it just like the movie just like that third act just like seems like a separate film to me. You know what I mean? But it it's so great. But once they they they're on the boat and they build those relationships, you know what I mean? And the the sort of the humor to it, and then the you know the scene where uh, Quint's telling his story about the Annapolis. You know the the crazy, uh, you know, with all the sharks, like it, it just really the bonding of that that trip, you know, of them going that, to search yeah, that for that speech is oh, staggering. It's it's, oh. it's amazing, yeah, it's so good. But I love like moments like this, like this is parts that I love. Yeah, Adam, the boat. Go ahead. Oh, slow ahead. I can go slow ahead. Come on down and chump some of this shit. <laughs> and that's that's one of the one of the great like jump scares, I feel like. You know what I mean? One of the greatest ever is that that scene is you're so let down, right? Because you're you're kind of like in with these characters and they're you know, they're frustrated, they're joking around. Yep. Bro- Brody's doing that, he's throwing shit in, and you just don't even expect it. That that's probably one of the scariest moments. I remember seeing that as a kid and really just freaking you know jumping out of my seat you know what i mean it was yeah, and that, yes and not not only that like the pavlovian thing where where you know they play the music and the shark arrives it becomes this automatic thing yeah you expect and then, it and then and they completely manipulate they completely completely have you because he stripped the music away and it's like well you don't hear it then there's nothing you know like yeah. you said guards down bam it's yes. like holy shit man. brilliant and there's so many moments like that you know what i mean it's so great oh my god um, um, my one of my favorites. Uh, I know you're gonna share yours too. Uh, yeah. My, my other favorite is when, is when he's doing all the research and um, he's sitting there and he's reading his books and stuff about the sharks and 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 he yells at his son to get out of the boat. Um, <laughs> after this is Michael, after, get right out after, of the boat. <laughs> so first, Ellen, his wife, is like, what, "What? He's sitting in a boat. He's not in yeah. the water. He's." And then she sees the picture. She's like, oh, "Did you hear God. your father? Out of the water now?" Yes. It's so it's so great. It's oh, I love so that. great. Yeah. But it's so human too. It's no. so, such something you would do. You know, this movie parent. is so human. You know what I mean? It's so great. And that you know, people always ask me, "What's your favorite scene in Jaws?" You know what I mean? And people are expecting, like you just said, like that seems great because it tells so much about these parents and their relationship. You know? Yes. Um, and that their love for their kids and the you know Brody's protecting their children, but. The scene, my favorite scene, people are always shocked, is the scene where when they're at the dinner table and Brody's, you know, just had a bad day because Kittner's mother, right, smacked him across the face. He's kind of frustrated. Um, he's had a tough day. And uh, he gets he get gets this emotional uh, moment with his with his young son.
and if you remember correctly, they're making the you know Brody sort of like like he's he's like frustrated and tired, and he's holding his head, and his son is sort of mimicking right what he's doing, and then he catches on, um, and then he realizes, so he starts playing along with his son. But the greatest thing is. Um, Mrs. Brody is in the background. She kind of walks in out of frame. Yes, she's, yes. And she's watching like almost in like she's just like in awe. You feel her emotion. It you know what I mean? Case. It's it's oh, yeah. it's such a great it's such a great scene. I love it. It's so it, good. It just, like you said, it just completely grounds it in in the three dimensional world and the characters and like oh, it's so real. It's so human and that that's why we care so much. And you think of like from a screenplay standpoint, you know what I mean? Like the Think of like how that would look on a screenplay. There's there's like two lines in the whole that whole scene. You know what I mean? Right. And it's just like, you know, Brody puts his hands on his head. His son looks and, and mimics his dad. But you know what I mean? And then Mrs. Brody comes in from the background. It, it's just it's brilliant. It's, it's it does so much without saying anything. You know what I mean? It's it's great. I know. And you go from that beauty and that that perfect you know family thing. And then and then when you're in Quince World in that. That shack with all you know his his yes. building there when he's boiling the shark uh, bones and everything, and he pours, you know now you're in his world and yep. uh, you know he's he's demeaning Hooper and and he pours a shot for Brody you know after he's been hired and he's like here's to swimming with bow legged women, <laughs> I mean now you're in his so you go to kind of this crass thing and that's his that's his like humanity yes you know, that's what he know knows him, yep you know and then and then you know when he's testing hooper's knowledge and, about knots and, and oh my and, god and, it, and his hands and he when he grabs his hands he goes you got city hands mr hooper <laughs> you've been counting money all your life <laughs> it's such a great line oh my god hooper says something like uh i don't need i don't need any of this middle class uh, hero bullshit or something like that uh, oh it's so oh it's so great cool. what knot did he have him tied, maddie oh i do not recall oh maddie but, I do not recall. It's such a great knot. I know how to tie it. It's called the, um, oh, fuck. I just forgot it now. It's called See, the, your head. oh, God. Oh, my God, because I know how to tie it. I, I learned it because I'm obsessed with Jaws. Oh, my God. What? What? Oh, my God. Anyway, I'll think of it. I'm going to spit it out in a minute. You can I mean, that, like you said, that monologue is just gold i mean they're bonding they're throwing their 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 scars and everything up and then he just goes off what is it like three and a half minutes of this perfect perfect dialogue coming out of robert shaw's mouth yep absolutely um i mean I, listen we could sit here and talk about this all but the, they're the kills are oh man they are they are just there's some really disturbing ones um i just we could sit here and talk about this all night but um we got to start wrapping up i think i think you're right yeah without a doubt um so, you know, summertime, you always think of certain films that you want to jump into and, and, and watch, you know. But, uh, yeah, these, these movies that we talked about tonight are our summer films. You know what I mean? These are the ones that we love and we really enjoy watching. You know what I mean? And I feel like I'd love to hear from other people what their summer films are. You know, what are your go-to summer films? Um, and listen, any Friday the Thirteenth would work, you know. Well, that well. that's true, and I think we preface this that we don't really, um, we don't really, we didn't want to bring up the Friday films because I think you know we have plans in the future for more Friday podcasts and stuff, and we didn't want to kind of beat it to death, right? Oh yeah, Sheepshank. That's the name of the knot. Sorry, it was bothering me. Sheepshank. It was a Sheepshank knot. Yeah, that's where you take a rope and you make it shorter. But anyway, I learned learned how to do it really well because of Jaws. So, and I, I'm so mad at myself that I couldn't think of the name. But yeah, Sheepshank, that's what it's called. But anyway. so you have uh, any plans and going away, going away? Well, yeah, we're going to Nantucket in August, which I'm. It, it totally reminds me of of uh, of Jaws. You know what I mean? But Jaws was filmed at Martha's Vineyard. But it it's just very close by. It is, and it has that vibe. You know, we forgot to mention that I was just at Camp uh, Arawak when I was up in uh, Lake George. Yeah, and, check out our Instagram feed. It's there's some nice, really nice pictures that uh, Mike posted there. Yeah, not to jump back to Sleepaway Camp, but I was saying to you, Maddie, that I was so surprised at how small that lake was, where they where the camp actually was. That you yes. know the, the the magic of filmmaking, they made it seem so big, you know. And even the campsite was like a, a smaller plot of land than it really seemed. You know, they did a lot of walking through woods and stuff to make it seem like it was bigger than it was. You know, 
It's great, man. Yeah, it's awesome. But anyway, so um, yeah, you heard about our passionate summer films. We'd love to hear from you guys. What are some of yours? You know, so definitely send us yeah, a, a message or email, whatever. Please do. We'd love to hear about it. No, we were looking forward to doing this and sharing these with you. And uh, you know, there's spoilers abound in here. We just assumed everyone has seen these. Um, you know, so now you have our kind of our personal, you know, stories and and, and insights about about these four great, great, yeah. great slashers. I think that's what we bring to this podcast, right? Our love and passion of horror, and just you know, where we, uh, w- what it means to us, you know. So hopefully, you guys enjoy that because we enjoy talking about it. You know, it's great. Definitely, man. So, are we going to tease anything for fall, Matt? Uh, we can. We might. I we suppose. might have. We might have another another uh, podcast before fall is here, but. Um, you want to give us a little tease of maybe something that might be coming up? Might be, um, let's see, we might be talking about a certain 20th anniversary of a of film in a very, very different way. Yes. I'll just say that, I'll just say that Yes. for now. And, you got anything? And, I, you know, maybe tease the commentary that we talked about in the fall. You know, we're definitely, what we did in the past with the Friday films, I think we might be doing the same thing with the last commentary. Not the last commentary. The last um, second to last commentary. I think we're kind of staying yes. with with that. So if, if anyone can guess what that may be, seasonally um, themed, seasonally themed uh, continuation of a commentary that we did <laughs> not too long ago. So then we'll leave you with that. But we're excited about that. So that'll be great. So, Maddie, summertime, you want to leave us with something? Um, yeah, why not? If you find yourself alone in the dark, there's no need to worry. Don't fret. Just follow the gentle sound of my voice. Let my words wash over you like the calm surf as it laps against the shore. Let yourself sink down into the bed as I sing the remnants of an old forgotten lullaby. Farewell and adieu. To you fair podcast listeners, farewell and adieu, all listeners of podcast. Well, we shan't bid farewell to the sweet summer slasher. With faith in our hearts, we shall make them last. Good night, boys and girls. And remember, stay out of the woods. Good night, everybody. Thanks for listening. We'll see you soon. Good